It's a fine new day in Edgewater. The cannery hums, streetlights and faces glow. I suppose this means the two of you were able to sort out the matter? The greater good can be difficult to determine. None of us can know the effects of our decision in a year, or ten, or a hundred. Take comfort in the fact that your choices are always, ultimately, in line with the grand plan. From our own graveyard, just outside the gates, and Silas had not even an inkling. What do they pay the man for? He spends all day digging graves, Vicar. Sir, sometimes he's got to sleep. Yes, of course. Uh, my reaction was unreasonable. I'd need to give it careful consideration before answering. If it does improve the soil, it would seem to be a benefit overall. Once the spark of life is fled, the mortal form is but unanimated matter, comprised of the same elements as the rest of the universe. We inter for the comfort of the living, not the benefit of the dead. While distasteful, I would judge Ms. McDevitt's actions beneficial to the greater good. Only to the feelings of the living. The dead are no more concerned with their corpses than a snake is with the skin it shed. The greater good is to tend to the needs of the living, not the dead. Wonderful. This is fantastic. Well worth all the sacrifices I... Wait. What the fuck is this? Is this... French? I can't fucking read French. It's a law-forsaken joke is what it is. French! Ha! I was so high and mighty, preaching to the yokels about following the plan, while fighting it at every turn. Well, uh, yes. But I assure you, it was not for personal gain, only for the greater good. I've spent my life searching for the keys to unlocking the secrets of the universal equation that underlies the plan. I had hoped this book held some of those answers. I became so desperate, I even got myself assigned to this plague-ridden backwater to find the damn thing. All the time and suffering I've spent. Wasted. Bokonu, the author, had some interesting theories about man's perception of reality that I thought could be applied to our attempts to decipher the plan. Unfortunately, he was also one of the founders of the Philosophist School of Thought, so the book is banned in this colony. Philosophism's a false religion that stands in contradiction to almost everything we know to be true. They believe all is chaos, in stark contrast to OSI's belief in the plan. But most of the philosophist perversion of Bakonu's thoughts came more than a century after his death. The story of my life. Most lay people are not aware of this, but we've not discovered any new insights into the plan for a long, long time. I had an idea that we should welcome the truth, no matter where we found it. I had the worst idea to share my thoughts with a superior. And that's how I ended up assigned prison duty, where I was fool enough to let an inmate bend my ear with stories of an original Bokonu journal. But that's neither here nor there. What I need to do now is to find a translator, obviously. But to do that, I'll first need to secure transport. You have a ship. Perhaps I could make myself of use to your crew. Free spiritual counseling, someone to watch your back, not to mention a grown-up in the party. I'm 28. Exactly. I'm pretty handy with a tossball stick, or any blunt instrument, really. 
I'm also a passable gun hand if it comes to that. I can usually talk my way out of conflict, though. Oh, I'm fairly competent at hacking computers as well. Well, understanding computers is, though I admit I took it further than most. And I was quite the 32nd back during my penitentiary term. <laughs> Left many an opponent bleeding in the prison yard. Of course, I'm a vicar who is dedicated to his calling. More dedicated than any other you'll find in this colony. I joined the OSI to help decipher the Grand Plan. But instead, I ended up the vicar in a prison due to ignorance and politics. Then I came here. Satisfied? Fantastic. Let me get my things in order and I'll catch up with you. Edgewater's gonna miss you. Folk here always had good things to say about their vicar. Thank you, Ms. Holcomb. I'll be glad for the change of scenery. And to leave this place behind. I shall see you on the ship, Captain, whenever you're ready to leave Emerald Vale. Something got you down? Nothing. Cannery's been running at full capacity. I've been feeling pretty low these days. At least you got your helm. Hey, thanks for helping me back in that cave. You got a real knack for curative work. It's a good day if you make it back to town in one piece. If it ain't the Starship Inspector, here's hoping Edgewater's up to your standards. Something to report? We pay by the finger. What do you have for me? Gil Antrim. Real name, Guillaume. Duly processed by a freelancer on behalf of Spacer's Choice. I remember him. I was just a kid last I saw him. Shame. I'll just need your signature here, 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 and here. Got any more fingers for me? Mabel Burgess, age 37, right or left-handed? Let's just say, no longer applicable. I remember Doc Burgess. Conducted my physical every fiscal quarter. Guess she couldn't keep her hands off her patient's medicine. Still one outstanding bounty. If you've got a finger... I've got the paperwork. Here we are. Birdie Cotton. Cause of death. Let's just say overwhelming physical trauma. Bert was the local preacher before Max took over. Always was quick to remind us that we all get what we deserve in the end. Well, that's all three. I must remember to requisition some more fingerprint ink. Here's all the compensation you've earned, plus a bonus. You've done such a bang-up job hunting down our former workers that I thought it only proper to deputize you. Congratulations. Let me stop you there. It is official Spacer's Choice policy that all Marauders, regardless of prior affiliation to the Spacer's Choice brand, no longer qualify as our people. Ever since the company first settled the veil, life's good out here, but... It ain't easy. Some folk can't keep pace with the demands of frontier life. Not everyone's cut out to work in Edgewater. Some turn deserter, some turn marauder. None of them get my sympathy. Everybody likes Adrena Time. It is the finest medical drug ever developed by Spacer's Choice. Much better than that crap anti Cleo pedals. Sure, a little too much Adrena time can bring out the violent animal in you, but if overdosing on Adrena time turns you into a lunatic, you have only yourself to blame. 
says so right on the warning label. Violent psychosis is a well-documented and legally accounted for side effect of adrenotime. What's on your mind? Sometimes I wonder what I'm doing with myself. Nothing I can do about that. This is where the magic happens. Well, science. But it still happens. Sure. Hey, that's... I mean, if you need it, okay. If you're hungry, I could open up a can of something. My dad's... It's an office. Just my office. like flowers? I can't find many kinds around here. If you need to go, I'll wait outside. I don't like coming out here. This is a fine day, friend. Power flows through our town like a cool stream of water. I trust Adelaide's people have seen their way to reason. So, when can I expect them back at their posts? Then we are at an impasse. Stewardship over this town has been entrusted to me by Spacer's choice. I am not perfect. I have made my share of mistakes, but I have done my best for this town. I am a Spacer's Choice man. My father was a Spacer's Choice man. Edgewater may not look like much to some buttoned-up freelancer, but it is my home. I don't believe you. Plague's a reality of life. Best treatment is a good work ethic. The very notion is just grotesque. A raw vegetable? Why don't you just ask me to go chew the bark off of a tree? We are a Spacer's Choice Saltuna cannery. We eat Saltuna here, and only Saltuna.
processed, liquefied, retextured saltuna rendered in a chemical bath, of course. Well, mostly saltuna. We've been experiencing a saltuna shortage, you see. So we've had to improvise. We've added wood chips, some mushrooms, a bit of sand, tossed some canid bits in our processor ones. It all tastes like saltuna in the end. Couple years, give or take, right around the time the first wave of plagues hit the town. Now listen, I do not know what pretty rhetoric Adelaide has fed you, but plagues are a simple fact of life. You will excuse me for being skeptical. How exactly is Adelaide growing crops in barren soil? Adelaide has been using dead bodies in her fertilizer? That's... Come to think of it, that's a stroke of brilliance. What a remarkably efficient solution. Recycling Spacer's Choice property long after its date of expiration. I was wondering about those missing bodies in Silas's cemetery. So, Adelaide wants me gone. Trade my life for the life of the town. You understand what she's doing. If I leave town, I am as good as dead. If I stay, Edgewater will die of attrition. Adelaide has discovered some secret cure for the plague, and she is holding my town ransom. If Adelaide's found a way to feed her people and cure the plague, then she deserves this office more than I do. I won't stand in her way. My life here is ended. Give me a little time to settle my affairs. I'm sure Adelaide will be glad to see the back of me. I do. Adelaide's found a cure for the plague, and she knows how to tend to crop. She's what this town needs. I have always tried to do right by my town. It has never been easy. A couple months ago, I might have put in for a transfer. It's a big colony. Spacer's Choice has other towns. Now, I couldn't show my face in any of them. No such thing as an honorable resignation. Suppose I could find a place outside the walls, or put in for early retirement. I don't know. I could see myself lasting a week. Home is where the heart is. 
marauders took that saying a little too literally. Look at that. The snakes come back. I never thought I'd see the day that Reed Thompson abandoned his post. Suppose we all have a breaking point. Suppose it's time our flock made our way back to Edgewater. We must tend to what remains of the town and carry on with our lives as best we may. You're vexing to me, you know? Injuring us with one hand, helping us with the other. Here, I'm giving you something to leave us be. It's a ransom, you understand, not a reward. You're telling me you did all this just to put me in charge of Edgewater? Stranger, you are some kind of twisted. I might turn that old cannery into a garden. Got ourselves a whole cemetery bursting with bodies. I need some time to gather my personals. Long walk back to Edgewater. Got a considerable burden to carry. That was a good thing you did, Captain. Helping to bring the deserters and Edgewater folks back together. I hope you rest well on that. One of us... Sorry. Uh, I'm just trying to figure out what to do, is all. Adelaide said that? Was she sober at the time? I never imagined she'd step foot in Edgewater long as Reed ran the town. Something must have changed in Edgewater. Adelaide's good as family. If she's going back, so are we. Never liked Reed much. Can't say I'm sorry he's gone. 